on a personal note, you mentioned being a black owned business. I'm a Latino here. Representation is something that has always been really important to me, but more important, I, I guess the way I view it is, is more of like forging your own way is the thing. It's, you know, I came here from Peru and the thing that I looked around and it's like, like if I asked you to say like, oh, name a Peruvian, that's like, that made it, you would, it, you'd struggle, right? You'd be like, I don't, I have no idea. And so my challenge personally for me, like the life mission has always been like, I need to be that person, right? Because when I look around, I don't see it. And unfortunately, and this is kind of like the hard part, right? The hard part is that means it's on you. <laughs> that means yeah. if you look around and there's nobody, that means you better be the one to start making moves for your family or whoever, just so that, you know, even if they choose to be inspired, they have something to point to and go, well, that looks like it's successful. Definitely so. How deep rooted is that for you? It's a huge part of what keeps me going. I think it's unfair. I think there's an unfair, undue pressure on women and minorities to succeed because mm -hmm. I do feel this pressure like, well, if I don't do well, then our investors might not ever invest in another woman or black owned business. Or if I don't do well with that shelf space, Target might not be apt to give another black owned business shelf space. And so I think it stifles you a little bit because you can't be as risk taking because you feel so much weight. However, I feel the weight and I know it's there and I want to make people proud and I want to inspire people and I want to leave the door open for people coming behind me more wide than it was for me. And so it's definitely something that I'm very passionate about. Like, how do we continue to lift underrepresented, underestimated communities as our business continues to grow? I want to ask you what that was like when this George Floyd event occurred. What were people writing to you about? Obviously, it sounds like they're interested in helping but to what extent, like, what were they doing? What were they saying? And because I can imagine this being like good and bad or good and like icky. Like, I just think about these messages of like the world, like, for example, where I am in LA, the riots were right here. I mean, it was like literally right here. And it, the day starts with you see hundreds of pe thousands of people walking down the street and it's like brings you to tears because it's like people care. This is great. And then 8 p.m. hits and it's dark and now everyone's, you know, breaking into these these businesses. And next thing you know, it feels like you're in a different country because all these businesses are boarded up and it's in quarantine. And so it's sad. Right. And it's like, so we already have all these emotions happening. And then you throw in, then people are messaging you to, to try to figure this out or help. What, you know, what was that like? It was lots of influencers and press and celebrities saying, let's shop black owned businesses. And the thing that was frustrating was there's not that many nationally scaled black owned food businesses. And so we were on every list, which I was proud of, but just really brought to light again, how few people are in this position and that's not a good thing. And so that's what we saw. We also saw retailers make commitments and investors make commitments about adding diversity to their shelves or to their portfolio. You know, I appreciated when people were, were more public and also more quantitative in what they were going to do because, you know, we can ask for the receipts a year from now and like see if people really held true to that. And so it was just a level of press unlike anything we had seen before, which really supported our e-com business, helped move our product off the shelf. Thankfully, June was one of our best e-commerce months to at the time was our best by far month in our e-commerce history and we had partnered with a group called the food equality initiative that was started by a black woman in kansas city whose family was experiencing food insecurity and her kids have food allergies and so they bring allergy friendly foods to food insecure families and we were able to with a portion of the proceeds from our online sales in june thanks to all of that inbound feed thousands of families, um, 4,000 families across the country. And so I hope that there were some good things that we were able to do because of, of what happened. That's amazing. Yeah, that's great. There, there, I think people forget about this notion that, um, like I know here in LA, there's a lot of minority communities that their only source of internet was actually at the school. And, you know, now we're in quarantine, no internet, no laptop. And so now they're basically without education. And this is where the gap widens and no one talks about this, right? And so it's just nice to hear your story where you still looked out to help those people that obviously still represent the community and make up a large part of it. And we're all suffering with either food or just basic things that a lot of people, like that's not in the news, right? And I think that's, it's just unfortunate, but that's just the reality we live in. And so it's nice to hear that you're, you've done something to help 